Welcome to Dad's class. Welcome to the podcast where I, Devin Pierce, bring you the tools of my toolbox. So whether you are a parent going to be one or just adulting, it is my goal to help you be better equipped for the great adventure that is life. And if I give you all my tools, maybe you can teach me how to use some of them. Welcome to Dad's class. We are live over at Mixer.com slash Dad's class. We try to go live every Wednesday around 5 p.m. Our Facebook page has a list of events there, and you can check on those uh, for changes, as well as I tend to post on Twitter as we go live. Not really great about posting on Twitter before we go live, but uh, if you're following the page over there, make sure you get notifications for us. Or if you're here, subscribed, following this channel on Mixer, make sure you are getting notifications for our channel. How are you folks doing this week? Hmm? Holding in there? Staying strong? Trying new things maybe? Or perhaps you, uh, perhaps you're just getting back into old things. Whatever the case may be, I hope you guys are safe. I hope you guys are doing well, enjoying time with your family in some form or another, or perhaps taking care of that self-care which is always good to do, too. Now this bumper. Woohoo! Yep, yep, yep! Since last class, we talked about uh, good, fair, firm, consistent discipline last week. That was our topic. And with that conversation that we had on last week's episode, we talked about those three aspects of good discipline. We looked at common mistakes of different types of discipline. And that was the first week of me trying a different style of show notes. So I'm not sure how it came across for you guys. And this week it's even less show notes. So hopefully you guys like the new format. Hoping this week's episode also won't be nearly as long as last week's. I apologize. I Those uh, Raising Responsible Children series are a longer uh, jaunt for us all to listen to. As beautiful as my voice is, I'm sure some of you get sick of it once in a while. Alrighty. I am going to start off by copying that. I'm going to need that. But. My brain is. Uh, this has been my week. Let's just put it that way. I got my glasses fixed. So I now have arms on both sides of my glasses, which is great because now I should be able to do yoga and actually see the screen because my glasses won't fall off, which is nice. But yes, I am still doing the yoga. And while my glasses may have been fixed, my focus has been terribly broken and that'll probably come through on this week's episode. My apologies. I just can't seem to get my head in the game. Uh, this week's top five Tuesday was how parenting kind of sucks. And we also looked at some of the good things that come out of those less fun parts about being a parent. I hope some of you either could relate to that or maybe uh, got a good chuckle out of it too. But I didn't actually end up recording that till I think after my kids went to bed on Monday. So it was late night for me, Monday night, getting that edited and scheduled to be released for Tuesday morning, all that fun stuff. And that's just kind of been the week. You know, yesterday, we didn't really do anything, but I felt like we never stopped moving. <laughs> you know, today I got my glasses fixed. Uh, it's been a week of appointments. My spouse had a doctor's appointment yesterday. And... We have an appointment tomorrow, an appointment the next day, with everything reopening up and whatever. We started to venture out into the world a little bit. Still taking precautions and all that fun stuff. Um, but it's uh, very surreal, and I think maybe that might be affecting my mindset and why I'm having such a hard time getting my head in the game. To that end, though, I... Spent the majority of today cleaning up the studio again. Uh, for those who come over to the YouTube, you guys see we have... Uh... Right there. 
there now you can see it nice and clear nice and pretty silly thing here oh i keep touching the wrong ring uh those new decorations are uh tambourines for the audio listeners they're decorated with flowers and different fabrics of color and texture these are going to be the uh, bouquets essentially for my uh, fiance and our daughter uh, when we get married here next month i love them i think they turned out great uh, my spouse put those together she ordered all the parts and made them up uh, the other day and they look awesome A little bit more news here for you guys. We had, uh, over this past week, we did, I did my uh, tour over at twitch.tv slash crown, S-O-C-R-O-W-N-E-S-S, the number zero. And just played some more games, had nice relaxing evenings. Um, the one evening, actually, I didn't end up streaming because I broke something with my software but I fixed it, and since I figured out what I did wrong Friday night, things are actually working better, even for today's stream. So that's cool. It's, it's always a wonderful experience when you fix stuff. Uh, I have not yet made an opportunity to rec uh, go through the game night footage from May 17th. I had talked about last week getting that put together for you guys, but it hasn't fit into my life yet. I am hoping to get some of that up and put that over to the Facebook event page and stuff like that. But it just, quite frankly, hasn't happened yet. That's it for the news. We're on to today's week's class. Today's week's class? This week's class or today's class? Remember when I was talking about how my brain isn't working very well this week? Mm. Is it showing yet? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put into the chat the uh, a Facebook link, actually. But it is for uh, the information document I'm going to be referring to for this week's lesson. I had a different piece of paper actually in mind for when I was planning on doing this, but I can't find it. And I'm pretty sure I've gone through all of my resource material briefly, purposely because I was looking for the uh, chore sheet I had, but I can't find it. The one I had was on a yellow piece of paper. I remember that very distinctly, but I have no idea where I put it. <sighs> so, as you may have gathered by the title of this week's episode, today's class, folks, we're going to be talking about appropriate chores for children by age. And I'm pretty much just going to read you guys a list. Lack of show notes. I'm going to preface this by just throwing it out there that it really... These age brackets, any age brackets that you will find if you do a quick Google search for other list ideas, tour list ideas, or even if you go onto things like Pinterest and you look up ways to organize the chores in your house so that they look nice instead of just being a piece of paper on the wall with some stuff these ages are just suggestions and that's what i wanted to uh, bring up there your child might be younger than some of these older than some of these and you may want to start them with some of them before that bracket starts it really does depend on your child's mental abilities and you're gonna have to be the judge of them on that for yourselves i can't really tell you how capable your individual child is but i can tell you that there are also some jobs that have uh, legal restrictions on them too such as babysitting their siblings um, there is usually some form of training available to your ch older children about looking after younger children 
and also rules and regulations. I believe the babysitting course uh, here in Alberta is now taught to 11 year olds. I want to say that's how young my cousin's boy was when he got his certification in that course. We're actually going to start at the top of this list and we're going to work our way down in ages. Royce. We're almost always starting with the youngest ages and working our ways up. So today let's switch it around. Let's start with your teenagers and tweens. Let's start with tweens. Teenagers, they can start getting real jobs and well, that won't take away from their responsibilities within your family unit. And yeah, Pre preparation for adulthood right there. It doesn't get easier as you get older. <laughs> Poor buggers. Ages 12 and up. Children of this age should be more than capable of participating in mopping floors, changing light bulbs, which I thought was kind of a cool one, actually. It's not really a chore I thought of as a chore. It's just something that you do when it happens. Unless you're me, I have three burnt out in my studio right now, and I haven't done a darn thing about it. Wash and perhaps vacuum out a automobile. They say trim hedges, though I don't know very many people that keep hedges anymore. You can employ them towards painting your walls. Uh, even giving them the responsibility of shopping for some groceries on a list. This particular documentation states that a child by the age of 12 and up should be able to completely cook dinner on their own. I would still be there to assist if they want help or need help or have questions. But at 12, they should pretty much be able to do a lot of the cooking type things. I feel pretty confident in that. If you've been taking the time to teach your children how to bake, they should be able to do a basic bread or cake on their own by this point. And even help or do some small home repairs. Not electrical, but, you know, they can put a doorknob back on that's come off, that kind of thing. They should be able to wash windows inside and outside of your home because you should be able to trust them to use a ladder properly. I wouldn't give them things on the second story, but, you know, ground level. And this is where this list suggests that they should be capable of watching their younger siblings um, unattended. I believe the recommendation for 12 is less than two hours in Alberta. So for you to run to the corner store, grab the eggs that you don't have for breakfast in the morning, that kind of thing, but not for an overnighter or date night. The 10 to 11 year old range, they should be able to clean bathrooms, vacuum the rug, clear off countertops, provide a deep clean for your kitchen, prepare a simple meal, definitely should be able to do breakfast, a lunch, you know, maybe stepping up and not just doing plain sandwiches, but toasted, grilled, or oven toasted uh, sandwiches. They, at this age, depending on the style of lawnmower you have, should be able to mow the lawn, able to bring in the mail for you, and if you have the time to teach them, or they have taken home ec at school, uh, they should be able to sew a button back on or do simple mending on clothing. That is definitely one of those skill sets, though, if you're not teaching your kids, they probably won't have it. So if you want that to be a chore for them, you're going to have to coach them through it to get them to that level. The last one on this age group here says to uh, be able to sweep out the garage. A side note I would place with that one. If you're going to get your kids to sweep out your garage, make sure you're teaching your children about a spill management and cleanup, uh, different chemicals, different reactions. And if you don't already, because I think you guys have figured out I'm a pretty big advocate for safety everywhere, make sure that your children know where the fire extinguishers are in your home. So you should have one in your garage. And make sure they know how to use it. If you have one that's nearing expiry on its uh, fill, that's a great time to teach your kids how to use it. Just going to throw that out there. And I would say that's definitely a um, 
small, like five to 10 pound fire extinguisher. I would say those would be good for children's ages eight and up to practice with. I wouldn't be giving them a full size one like you see on the back of a flat deck truck until they're at least 12 or 13. That's not on that list. That's your own little tidbit. Ages eight to nine. At this age, they should be able to load a dishwasher properly. My kids are started doing the dishes when my young daughter was five, I think is when she started helping out with that. And she tag teams it with her older brother. Um, but yeah, between the ages of eight and nine, they should be able to effectively do the dishwasher without you having to come by and redo the dishwasher, <laughs> which is where we're at right now. But, you know, coaching your kids through these chores, we mentioned this in last week's episode. Yes. And the development of their own self-discipline is to give them chores. And that's kind of why, uh, at the suggestion of my spouse, but, uh, Furthermore, because of last week's episode, I thought this would make a good topic this week. Uh, they should be able to change light bulbs in lamps around your house or uh, if you have Sensi warmers, that kind of thing. Small, not requiring them to do overheads at that point. By this age, they should also be fully capable of using your dishwasher or using your laundry's washer and dryer, as well as folding and putting away their clothes, hanging them up, whatever the case may be, sorting and maintaining their laundry storage locations as well. This is the age where children should be able to dust your furniture and know what not to dust for fear of you having to repair it later. They should be able to clean off your uh, back patio, front patio, whatever you have, also should be knowledgeable enough in your household to be able to help with putting away your groceries when you bring them home. Ages 8 to 9 should be able to do simple cooking tasks such as uh, frying up some scrambled eggs, baking cookies, able to walk the dog around your street, uh, sweep out your porches, and they should be able to clear off the table after each meal. My kids have just started trying to walk the dogs. We have small dogs. We have a Chihuahua and an oversized Pomeranian. We're not really sure what she is, but she's fluffy. And yeah, so like I said, they're both six and seven right now. So they're practicing walking our small dogs. And with all chores, it really is this idea that you need to coach them through it and you need to help them be successful in the early processes of it. You don't just want them to get on the deck and flop like a fish, right? You you need to coach them towards success. And that goes back into the discipline we want to, uh, ties back into that discipline, actually, where we want to set out our expectations for our kids, but we want to help them succeed. Uh, we've also talked about goal planning. So when you're setting out chores, new chores for your children, set the bar low the first time they try it, and then help them do better from there and increase your expectations over time. Children the ages of my own, the 6 to 7 range, should be able to gather the smaller trash cans from around your house and place them into the larger trash can as well as picking up any odds and ends of trash. They should have enough hand-eye coordination to fold small towels and hand cloths, those kinds of forms of laundry. Our children, because we started them a little bit earlier on it, do their own folding. It's not very neat folding, but they do do all the folding of their own clothes now. Children of this age should be able to empty your dishwasher effectively. My kids are able to put most dishes away, except for the ones that are obviously too high for them. They should be able to match their clean socks, but not necessarily fold them away. <laughs> socks are tricky. Ages six to seven, this is a prime age where you can introduce your children to gardening and getting them to identify plants and start pulling weeds for you. That's also some awesome one-on-one uh, -on -one time or small group family time. 
that is probably my favorite one on this list, actually, uh, for the this age range, anyways. Children of this age group, if you get them an appropriately sized tool, should also be able to rake leaves come the fall. And you can start coaching them on how to peel potatoes or carrots. They should have the idea down towards making a salad. I, my children need more practice with sharp objects before they could cut all of the ingredients we put in our salad. But that's again, that practice, that coaching, that repetition. If you don't give your children the opportunity to try these different chores, they're not going to hit these marks. And we've talked about this in the past. It really is just like when we're looking at ages and stages of development. It really depends on what you, as their parent, as their educator, the person who provides their roles and role modeling, it really comes down to what you've shown them. But I hope this list helps you guys come up with some ideas or maybe... Maybe you doing all this and you're just going to feel really great about your parenting at the end of this conversation. The last one on the ages six to seven list is being able to replace toilet paper rolls. I would also throw on there the paper towel or know how to open up a box of tissue paper. I've had that. Here, go replace this tissue box. You go to use that tissue box later and it's still sealed up. Why didn't you open it? You just told me to replace it. Yes. Yes. That is what I said. <laughs> Comes back to explaining your expectations, right? And that's the key. Telling them what you need of them. Okay. Uh, for the age of four to five range, children should be able to... Uh, Feed your pets. Make sure you have a sized scoop so they only have to do it once. And definitely practice that one. They should be able to wipe up their own spills. Our two-year-old's pretty good at this one, so by five, it's definitely a skill they should understand. Children of these age range definitely need to be able to put away their own toys to save yourself some headaches later. And this is where we want to coach them through the making of their bed. Our kids have gotten really good at this in a short period of time. It's not typically a task we ask them to do. We're not big bed makers in our family. Um, but the last couple of days where I've asked them to do it, just to help their day get started, they've done really well with it, actually. It's awesome. Uh, on top of being able to make their own bed, your children should be able to put their whole room together, tidy up everything, make it all nice and neat. And this will eventually lead into them being able to do all of their own laundry in the next age bracket, right? If you have house plants, if you can keep a plant alive in your house, by all means, this is the age to encourage your children to learn how to water plants. But yes, your children should be able to take from the clean dishes and sort out your silverware into the appropriate receptacles in their drawers or cups if you're one of those people. Ages four to five, you can get your kids into the kitchen helping you put together small snacks such as uh, cheeses, meats, veggie trays, that kind of snacking. Or at least they should be able to go to your pantry and open up a granola bar. This is a skill they need for going to school. So definitely time to practice if they can't do that for themselves now at four to five. Children of this age should be able to use a small hand vacuum and they should be able to clear the kitchen table for you at the end of the meal. They might not be able to reach the middle to wipe it clean, but they should be able to get all the dishes off of it and ready for the dishwasher. Children of this age should be capable of drying dishes that are hand washed and putting them away. And they are usually about the good height to clean your doorknobs. That's a really random chore to have on a list, but basically any handle, uh, handrail or anything of that effect is a good height for a child. Ergonomically, pretty good for that. They are also a much younger and potentially better for cleaning your baseboards. A chore that we don't often do in our house. If the broom didn't get it when I swept, it didn't need to leave. 
the last age range that we're going to talk about today is the two to three range. Now, all of these, as soon as your toddler is trying to communicate with you and is capable of walking around, you can start with making games out of these chores to coach them through that. So if your kid's walking at 11 months, you can start doing it then. It's fine. You're not going to hurt your kid by imposing uh, the basic concepts of good chores and good behavior earlier on. But you can do it a little bit more fun. When they're in the two or three bracket, you're really trying to achieve that this is a chore. This is a task that you are being assigned. This is your responsibility. That's where you're going to start instilling in them at that age bracket. Again, as soon as they're walking and essentially talking, you can start trying to coach them into these things. And as far as I'm concerned, the earlier you start, the better off you will be in the long run for achieving the following list. Putting away their toys. Stacking books on the bookshelf. This is one that all of my kids could use practice on. The older ones are getting better. But uh, yeah, proper care of books is a hard one to teach kids. I have found so many books inside of books inside of books because they just shove them on the shelf and they eat another book. Ugh. Children of this age should be able to tidy up dirty laundry into a hamper. Throw away the trash or recycle. Uh, children of the two to three range are typically quite helpful because they want to be involved and they want to show you that they can do what you can do. So small chores such as carrying firewood or carrying anything really is something that you can get this age range to be doing for you. Uh, if you would like, you can start introducing them to folding laundry with hand towels at this age. Closer to the 3-4 range, they can help you uh, bring some stuff to the table for setting the table. And they should, at this age range, be able to bring the diapers and wipes to you when they need a change if you haven't started potty training already. For our youngest, he is in this 2-3 uh, to three range. And where he's at, we actually get him to uh, feed our dogs. He gives them treats. He does their food. We do the water, though. And... On the days where he's feeling his muscles and able to pull the patio door open, he lets the dogs in and out. It's one of his chores. And we also get our kids to identify where any of the uh, puppy poop is in the yard. Um, they're weirded out by cleaning it up yet, so we're working on it. But they are our poop patrol in our backyard. That's one of the tasks we get the kids to do. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else... That wasn't mentioned on this list that we do with our kids. <laughs> you know, that's pretty much it. I, as I said, I don't, uh, I didn't make much for show notes this week. So because of my inability to get my head in the game, I just spent the day cleaning, hoping that I would get my own mindset straightened out. And then, at 4 o'clock, started preparing tonight's episode for the 5 o'clock show. That being said, let's move on to... Question of the week. Let me know, guys, either via Twitter, email, down below the bridge where all the trolls live on the YouTube comment section, or maybe you'll come by next Wednesday and be live in chat here at Mixer.com slash Dad's Class. What chores do you have your children doing? Let me know their age ranges and what their chores are. Was there some on this list, perhaps, that you don't do for your kids within the age bracket? Or maybe, maybe, because of today's episode, you have a new chore for the children in your house. As always, guys, I look forward to hearing your feedback, so please, 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 please... Rate the show if you're listening on an audio podcast platform that has a rating system. Share it with your friends and family. Leave a review. You know, Come on over to YouTube. Like the video. If you guys do find anything on this episode or any other episode of the show informative or helpful, please reach out to me. Let me know what you guys have learned from the show, what you'd like to learn in the future. If you have ideas or suggestions for future episodes, I'm all ears. 
you can always, of course, follow the show on Twitter or like the Facebook page with Dad's Class, all one word, at Dad's Class on Twitter and Facebook.com slash Dad's Class. You can email me directly at crownesso at gmail.com, C-R-O-W-N-E-S-S, the number zero, at gmail.com. And you can find me personally on Twitter, TikTok, Twitch, Xbox, and Discord with that same user. Thanks for taking the time today, guys, to involve yourself with this week's Dad's Class podcast episode. And if you'd like to continue learning... Go check out these recommended videos. And then I need some time of me just sitting here for YouTube. Ta-da! Yeah, just hands.